everybody, and welcome to Kick Conflict to the Curb, the place that growth-minded individuals come to stomp out their stress. I'm your host, Joyce Weiss, communication coach and queen of conflict resolution, and I'm the HR professional's partner. I coach their direct reports so they improve their relationships at work and even get a better night's sleep. How do I do this, you may ask? They transform from not knowing how to start a tough conversation all the way to feeling confident using their voice and getting the respect that they deserve. I coach either individuals or small groups. And I am so happy to say that at times I use the Conflict Dynamic Profile Assessment and my clients are amazed. They, they think I'm a palm reader. And say, how did you know that about me? And it measures how they deal with conflict before, during, and after. So if you want to know more about that, at the end, I will put my um, email and contact information. But let's get into today. I met our guest not very long ago. And... He and I have been talking about this show, seems like forever, and I am so excited about what he is going to be sharing with us. But first, I would like you to, to introduce you to our guest. Frank Aiden works to empower small businesses achieve more by helping them create dynamic professional relationships. He does this by operating a membership-based referral program, American Spirit Business Connection, and shares insightful content with his podcasts, articles, and books. Learn more about Frank at frankagan.com. Welcome to the show, Frank. So I hope you're ready. I'm going to bring him into the studio. Yeah. Joyce, you are big time. I mean, this is this is a big time production. <laughs> I've got a big time guest. What do you think I'm going to do? Oh, oh well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So let's you think. There you go. There's your name. There's founder of M Spirit Business Connections. So you shared with me a fun fact. Let's get into that first. OK, that. You have, tell us about your comics, please, your collection. Yeah, well, I um, I was headed off to law school and I just started collecting uh, Captain America comics. It's kind of weird, um, but it was, mm. it was in the mid 80s. And, you know, I would just, so I have them dating back to 1968. They, you know, they're secure in a box way up off the floor and, uh, you know, I don't, they're probably worth something with everything going on with all the movies. Um, but my wife's like, I'll oh, just hang on to them someday. Oh, so. well, good. I have a feeling see, people may even contact you to get in touch with you about your comics. So, sure. but hopefully with other things too. Sure. So I advertised um, today as the secrets to create great relationships. So Frank, what is the secret to great relationships? I, I really don't know what you're going to say. Okay. Well, let me start off and just tell a quick story and you, you can signal me if I'm, if I'm yammering on, but I don't intend to. Um, there's a famous anthropologist out there. Her name's Margaret Mead. And she was asked a question in one of her class, one of her classes. And the student asked, what was the first sign of human civilization? And she thought about it and people were waiting with bated breath as to what the answer would be. Maybe it's weapons, maybe it's clay pots, maybe it's fire, whatever. Her response was a healed femur. Now the femur is the bone that connects the knee to the hip and without modern medical care, takes about six weeks for that to heal. And she went on to explain that in the animal world, when you come across an animal that, you know, if an animal br breaks its femur, it's dead. I mean, it's a death sentence. It can't move, it can't get food, it can't get water, it's going to have a slow, painful death. But when we came across humans who had a healed femur, we realized that somebody stayed behind to care for that person, which I thought was a very interesting story. And somebody shared it with me on my podcast. And 
I've thought about that over and over again. And that's really the genesis of who we are as humans and, and really answers your question because the people who are willing to stay behind, um, help somebody survive. And then they instilled in that person the reciprocity of, hey, if you're hurt, I'll do the same thing. And those gene pools have carried forward. So you ask the question, you know, what's, you know, what's the secret to great relationships? It's being willing to stay behind. It's being willing to help other people. It's being willing to add value. And maybe it's something not as catastrophic as somebody's healed femur. Maybe it's as simple as, hey, I've got a post and this is really important to me. Would you share it out? You know, we all have metaphorical broken femurs where people can help us out. And so that's the secret to relationships is just finding ways to add value to others and trusting that for the most part, people will, will return that. Wow. And do you find that because we're going to go into networking in a moment since that's a big umbrella of yours also. Oh, I don't want to say percentage, but the people who, who you meet at different networking events, either virtual or face to face percentage. Do you find that there are a lot of people that are staying behind and supporting and referring or is it more about me, 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 me? Well, I, you know, I, I think we. I think a lot of, well, I'll, I'll use myself as an example. I was the me, 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 me person. I was. And I think we're, that's kind of instilled in, not instilled in us, but it's, you know, society kind of drives that. We've got quotas. We've got things we need to do. We need to make sales. And, you know, there are movies out there and you get the wrong impression. Um, but I think ultimately what happens with most successful people is that in time they realize that that really doesn't work. It really doesn't work. And what works is, taking the time to try and help other people and then just trusting that it'll come back to us somehow, some way. And some people are really good at it. Yes, there are people out there who can't get beyond the me, 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 me thing. Yep. And, um, and they struggle. Yep. They struggle. How did you turn around? You used to be a me, me, me. And now I know you're not. I know you're not. The little bit that I know and how you've marketed this particular um, program just in the short, these th th three days, yeah. what was your transformation? Well, you know, when I, uh, just a quick uh, story on my background, I was an attorney. I was a, well, I was a tax consultant working in a big firm and I left and went out on my own. And I really struggled to try and make a go of it because I had no idea how to get clients. I was that me, 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 me person. Mm -hmm. And somebody invited me into a networking organization, something similar to a BNI. People are familiar with that. Um, but it was an organization ba based out of Pittsburgh, which I've ultimately bought and rebranded as Amspirit Business Connections. Ah. Um, but when I went to the first meeting and how it was explained to me, it made total sense that you could lift up your whole world by helping other people and just trusting that they would return it to you. And when we help other people, there, there's just a natural tendency to want to help that person in return. Um, and so I really kind of doubled down on the whole notion of, of helping other people. And it's let, let me just put it this way. I could talk till I'm blue in the face about you, Joyce. Wow, what a wonderful person. Great podcast. She's got books. She's great. She's great. You should have her on your podcast, you know. Um, and I could do that and go home and be, feel really great about myself. If I self-promote for two minutes, I'm exhausted. Right? I mean, that's just it. Right? Um, and so that was my initial kind of, okay, I really need to kind of, I need to be about other people. And then I got to thinking about it at one point. It's like, am I really about other people? Because everybody says they're about other people. Mm -hmm. I'm a giver, you know. And everybody everybody perceives that they're a giver. They think about, okay, I gave some money to the church. Yeah, that was three months ago. That's the only thing you've mm -hmm. done. But in their mind, they hang on to that. So what I started to do was I started to keep track of the things I did for people. Not as a means of keeping score. I would never go back to somebody and say, hey, Joyce, I did this for you, owe me. But I would just keep track for my own purposes. And I called it my giving journal. And I would just document in there, put a date, and I would write what I did, served on a board, did this, reviewed somebody's resume, little things. And there's lots of ways we can help people. 
what I found was that journal called to me almost every day and wow. said, hey, you know what? You you haven't done anything in three days. Um, and I don't journal like that anymore because it's just become very habitual for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to be on your podcast. I'm going to help you because it helps me, but it helps you, too. Um, and so that's how I've really kind of internalized the whole notion of just trying to help other people. And I love that. I just love that. And I know um, being a coach, we're trained that you don't talk. You ask questions and you listen. And I used to be a keynote speaker. I didn't listen. I did the stories. You're a great storyteller, Frank. I I was at the time, but they were a little longer than your stories. So it was a, such a learning curve. I had to learn how to shut up and listen. And like you said, it's less stress and energy when we do that. Yeah. Because otherwise you're on and you have to push and push. When you just sit back, it is it's a win-win for the person who you're having a relationship with and also you. So yay. Now I'm gonna have to burst this bubble and ask you a tougher question. Okay. You are you you know so much about networking, uh, especially because you're the founder of Am Spirit Business Connections. What mistakes do you see? What are typical mistakes that you see when people think that they're good networkers? Ha ha ha. Yeah, um it, there are really are there are lots of them. I, I I think a big one is being impatient. Mm-hmm. Um I use golf. I use I use golf as a metaphor, and I tell people, you know, when you go golfing, you're not looking to hit the tiny little white ball 400 yards and drop it in the hole. You're going to do it over a series of shots. You know, mm-hmm. I'm a bad golfer. It might be 12 mm-hmm. shots, but a good golfer is going to do it in four shots. Um, and that's how you need to look at networking: is that when you meet people, you know, it's just a, it's 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 a stepping stone. It's one shot after another. You haven't hired me. I haven't hired you. And I don't know that we ever will. And we don't need to. But I'm going to refer you to other podcasts, other opportunities and other people. And then that's going to lead to something which is going to lead to something else, Mm -hmm. which ultimately then you're standing in front of that person who says, hey, you know what? I was talking with so and so, um, which is three steps removed from me. I was talking with so and so and they told me that you do A, B and C and we need A, B and C. You don't even have to sell them. No. Yeah. And you and you just said the word. I find that on all these social media platforms, too many people sell, sell, sell. Okay, yes, for the last three days, I sold this pod, this, this, this show, this live broadcast. Not selling myself. I was selling. You, meaning you got to come and listen to this guy. He is brilliant. He is so engaging. I just wish that people understood. Here we come again, the energy. Once I learned that you got to build trust, talk about networking, build trust, build that relationship. That's your word. And then maybe a sale will come, just you said, but there's going to be something. There's going to be something that whether it's it's being a guest on a podcast or a show uh, or an introduction to that right person. So we're definitely on the same page here, sir. Thank you. you. Know, are there? Uh, no, thank you. Um, I have another question. But before I get there, is there another mistake? I mean, this may have been the biggest one, but is there another one that you want to mention? If not. Yeah, no, I mean, I think there are, I mean, there's a multitude. We could have to devote a whole show to it, but, uh, you know, people keep, people keep score, you know, Hey, I did mm-hmm. something for you. I'm not doing anything else until I get something back. Um, you know, people, um, yeah, I, you know, I kind of talked about, you know, well, I started to mention patience, you know, and yes, I do things yes. for people and I do things for people and, well, I have a I have a franchise in Chicago, franchisee in Chicago for my organization. And it really started with a relationship that I created 15 years ago. 
um, and have cultivated. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of, it was a numerous steps, but you know, it took time and it's just, but it ultimately paid off. And, uh, yeah, well, but there's, you know, it, that's the reality is we're all doing something today that's going to manifest itself sometime down the line. It might even be after I'm gone. Mm -hmm. I, I have a franchisee who shares the story of his mother was driving home from church and had a flat tire or something like that. Guy pulls over to change the tire and she's just like totally mystified. This guy's doing this. Aww. What do I owe you? And she just said, you're you're uh, uh, Jim Anderson's widow, aren't you? Yeah. Well, your your husband helped me years ago. You know, I got so, the chills. I know it's a, it's amazing, got, but but that's the you know we do things and we just don't know when they're going to come back to us. Oh my god! I, this, so. I, I knew this was going to be good. You're not disappointing me. All right. Well, thank I you. I get I get disappointed a lot. Not with my interviewees, of course not. So let's since the kick conflict to the curb is about conflict. Yep. Have you ever experienced bullies in your career? I got to ask. I mean, you're sure. I know you are not going to tell me that you were a bully. Please don't. Um, I couldn't well, see that. Well, I think that's a that, that's an interesting question, Joyce. I think, the you know, the you know, how do we define bullying? I mean, it's certainly mm -hmm. not in the traditional grade school sense. Um, right. But, um, you know, I think I define bullying as somebody who's using their position or situation to try to get you to do something that you probably would not otherwise do. And the simple answer is yes. I, I, I get it. I don't want to say daily, but I get it quite often. I get it from people. I've gotten it from uh, some franchisees, uh, some who are not in, in, in the system anymore. Um, you know, people just trying to push their power. Um, I get it from members. Um, I, you know, I've, yeah, I've experienced it. Um, and it's, it's interesting, you know, I just, I was, I ran into a quote today um, on Facebook, um, one of those little memes, and it said, uh, weak people seek revenge, strong people seek forgiveness, intelligent people ignore. Um, and you know what, I, I don't seek revenge. Um, but what I try to do when I come into bullying situations is you, you really have to kind of assess it. You know, do I really have something at risk here? Where am I willing to stand up to somebody? Um, and I've had conversations with my wife, like, I'm going to take a hard stand on this. And we we might be in a lawsuit. You know, mm -hmm. it might cost us. Um, but I think in the end, it's, you know, you're better off just to kind of ignore it. It's I, I call bullying social terrorism, right? And Absolutely. what is yeah? What does the United States do with terrorists? They don't negotiate. I'm not going to negotiate mm -hmm. with you because if I negotiate once, it's going to happen again and again. And it's you know, um, it's disappointing when it happens, certainly mm -hmm. from certain people. And um, you know, it gets, I don't know. It just gets back. It comes back to their insecurities. They just feel like they thank they, you. That's what they need. That and. Because I deal with so many um, HR professionals and bullying, it, it goes on a lot more than people think. I'm sure. Uh, the thing is, though, many times people are afraid to bring it to leaders because they're going to say, oh, I'm going to get attacked or retaliation. And when I work with my coaching clients about bullying, and especially if they are the victim, we right. work on how they can stop being the victim and then they're no fun they're, or the target, then all of a sudden they're no fun for the bully anymore and they're going to go to someone else. So yeah. I have a feeling what you've done and how you, you, you think about bullying a little different than most people. It, you, you, you wouldn't be fun to pick on, Frank. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> you just wouldn't. So um, I've got a question. What would Frank Agan tell his 18-year-old self? Um, you know, I think that's a, for me, that's an easy question because I'm the networking person. 18, I'm going off to college and I went off to a small college in Wisconsin, a small liberal arts college uh, to play football. I, I literally didn't visit. I just went to, I just knew I could play football there and I showed up August of, 
1980. Um, and I, played football and I, my, my football teammates are some great friends I have out there. Uh, they were all, most of them were part of the same fraternity. And I really didn't know a lot of people outside of those circles. I was happy in those circles, but as time has gone on and I've met other people that I was in, in school with, but didn't get to know, mm-hmm. um, I kind of kicked myself. And if I had to say something to my 18 year old self, Playing football is fine. Being the fraternity is fine. But I would really double down on trying to get to know and create relationships with other people. And I've asked that same question on my podcast and I get a similar answer. Maybe not the same backstory, Mm -hmm. but geez, you know, I was in one of my franchisees told me I was at this campus. And, you know, here are the sons and daughters of all of these big executives. And I didn't realize what I had there. Um, so that would be it. Network. So that's, that is so in your DNA. You are doing what you're supposed to do. Oh. Now, how, I got to ask you this one. How did you get so wise? I mean, it, it, we're not going to dissect your family background. Um, I'm serious. What messages did you get from your, your relatives when you were growing up that you, you're a wise one. Um, yeah, I don't really know. You know, my dad was a college professor. My mom was an academic as well. And, um, they, you know, they mentioned, Hey, it's not what you know, it's who, you know, but you're a kid. You you never listen to your parents, right? They could give you the six winning lottery numbers. You wouldn't play them. Um, you know, and it's just, I, you know, I think you just kind of stumble into it. Um, and you just start to realize now, mind you, this is my business, right? My right. business is about relationships and getting people to understand how they can make them work. Um, and so I have that advantage and I think about it a lot. I read a lot of studies related to how, you know, how, you know, social psychology type studies and how we interact and, you know, economics and how we, you know, how we, how things happen. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to psychologists and, you know, what they see. And I, you know, it was like the story I told about the broken femur. I think broken femur. I think about those things. Um, so I think it's just, and I've made a lot of mistakes. I have made a lot of mistakes. Um, just you know, silly things, said dumb things. Um, you know, so you you learn. The people I think the three people that will benefit the most from this are my three kids. Oh. You know, they are just. Yeah. Tell you us know, why. Well, they're just, they see it. You know, they, mm. like, I'm big into small talk, you know, and I'll be, I'll just strike up a conversation with anybody. Mm-hmm. And um, my daughter came to me once. She goes, yeah, I was at this thing. And guess what I did? I franked this guy. I'm like, what, what do you mean you franked him? I just had a conversation with him. It was a random conversation. And it's, but, you know, but small talk is such a, is such a huge thing for creating rapport. Um you know, and I see my, I see both my sons kind of the same thing. They've got these, they have these social skills, you know, and they're in their mid twenties. Mm. They're, you know, they're four, you know, they're 20 years ahead of where I was. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that's, they, you know, people say, are they going to take over your business? No, they don't want to take over my business. You know, they have their own success path they're on and they need to follow that path and not follow in dad's footsteps. Um, get out, you know, because they have all the abilities. Um, but what I have taught them are the important things that this is, you know, this is how you treat people. This is how you interact. This is how you, this is how you create success through building social capital with people. They are lucky to have you as a dad and vice versa. Obviously they <laughs> franked, I franked this. I love that. No, and I'm just going to tell you really quick. Um, what I tell my, I've done this with my grandkids from when they were little. Now they're all off to, um, they've all graduated from University of Michigan. I know, Ohio. Go uh, and now they're all on you know, grad school or the, a real job as, as an attorney. And all three of them are just doing great things. I'd say this, I said the same thing to all three. The secret to success is to ask other people questions about themselves. Yeah. Now I realized that's before I was a coach. So maybe it was in my DNA too, 
because and that came from backstory a guest who stayed here with my husband and I for two weeks and every night it was all about him and I had such a headache and so when my kids my grandkids came over right after this guy left I just had a new story for them right you're just full of stories well Frank First of all, I want to thank you. I mean, do you realize we're almost done? I know. It goes fast, doesn't it? Well, when you're having fun. Um, I want you now. This is your turn. I really want to showcase you how people can reach you, uh, what they will get when they reach you, what kind of offers can you say. This is. I really do want you to share this piece with my viewers, please. Yeah. Um, you know, my information is scrolling on the screen there. I, I, I'm partial to email, um, but I realize that people like to communicate in all sorts of ways. So if you go to frankagan.com, you can quickly get to my uh, LinkedIn or my Facebook. Uh, you can see my podcasts, um, books I've written. Um, but the organization that I own and operate, Am Spirit Business Connections, we help entrepreneurs, sales reps, professionals get more referrals from a membership based weekly meeting where they learn about other people and exchange, you know, get, develop relationships and learn how to pass referrals. And so mm -hmm. if that's something that somebody is interested in, if they need referrals, great. Um, if people just have questions, I'm happy to add, uh, ask questions. I do have, I do have some uh, short, well, I guess they're hour long webinars on networking, just little that people oh, really? have do over the years um, that people can can watch. I mean, at you know, your website, at your website. No, I, 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 oh. I, I haven't put them on there yet, but okay. but uh, but they're out there. Um, I do a fair amount of speaking, going into groups and talking with them. And it really depends upon the group. I mean, if I'm going into work with realtors, I'm talking about referrals and how to do a better job of getting referrals. Mm hmm. Um, if it's a job transition group, you know, it's kind of the same rules apply. You know, how do you develop relationships? You know, how do you, how, you know, how do you stand out when, you know, you've gotten that interview or how do you get that interview? Mm -hmm. That's a, that's even a, a more critical piece. Um, you know, so those are the types of things I'm certainly happy to, happy to help people. You sure are. So there, everybody, you could see there's the website. You can, uh, that's Frank's email. Um, don't be afraid to ask him. Uh, he is, so you can see, he, he, he's, he's real. He's authentic. What you see is what you get. Um, last question. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Will you please return? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. I, I think we have to give a shout out to Sajel Thacker, who introduced yes. us. Um, Sajel's a... Uh, She's a, a wonderful diversity and inclusion person out in the out in San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and just uh, she's just a neat person for people to to follow. She's got some she's got a couple TED Talks, one for sure. I know she did oh. a second. Awesome. So um, yeah, she's uh, she's a she's a great person and she's introduced me to lots of people. But I would be happy to come back on. Uh, I'm going to get you an invite to come on to my show. Right. Um, I will accept like that. And yep. you're right, folks. Did you just see what Frank did? Sajel's the person that introduced us. We were strangers. He thanked Sajel. This is just what he does. It's like breathing. Why can't we all do that? You better believe when we get off, I'm going to send her. You know, she may even be on for all I've been checking. Um, you never know who's on or not. We'll know afterwards. But come back. We will go deeper and we'll have different questions. And I just want to thank you for being such a, an engaging guest, um, full of such insight. And I know I the biggest takeaway I got was just to listen to you and how you are, you're, like I said before, you're real, you're authentic, networking and relationships just in your DNA, and you can't help yourself. And I thank you for that. Now spread it to the rest of the world. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I hate removing him from the studio, but I'm going to.
So I hope that you had as much fun as I did and learned about networking and the secret to great relationships. You saw modeling right there the way Frank did this. And this is my time to thank you for watching. Here's all my information. You can reach me, Joyce at JoyceWeiss.com. If you want to find out about individual or group coaching, connect with me. If we're not on LinkedIn, linkedin.com slash in slash Joyce Weiss. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There are over 200 videos with playlists like bullies and narcissists. And I'm actually going to have somebody come on and talk about her experience having a mom who was a narcissist. Wow. That's going to be powerful, too. So if you would like to be a guest, this is your time. All you have to do is send me an email, a guest on the show. I'm always looking for growth-minded, thought-provoking guests. So thank you so much. And I am going to end like I do every single video that you may see. You get what you tolerate. See you next time. Mm.